Lloyd here, and we are going to be changing gears on the type of gaming we're gonna. I'm going to be streaming. Usually, I do the good RPG or platformer adventure, but this time around, I decided to get something with a little more uh, challenge in the old noodle puzzles and whatnot. And what better game to play about puzzles than Professor Layton? Although, I can only stream this Layton right now. I have other Laytons, but they're for the DS, and I don't know how I can stream it. I don't have a capture card for them. So, this will have to do for now. Hope everyone's having a good day. Having a nice Wednesday and all that, even though it's a hump day. I'm glad everyone made through it. Alright, new game! Enter the name to be recorded in your save. Okay, we're going to do... As if it's no guess to anyone else... Lloyd! Get it! The story and characters in this game are entirely fictional. Any resemblance to real persons play- Oh, this is going too fast. <laughs> And we start off with a cutscene. And what is London but fog? Fog and London go hand in hand. Daddy? Mm, Daddy? She woke up. I hate having dreams like that. And then you got tears in your eyes. And you feel like crud. Uh, at least the medicine I take, most of the time I don't even remember my dreams. Right then. And we get a similar cutscene from the beginning. Although, I don't think it goes through the whole thing. She's got big old feet. <laughs> I just noticed that! Like, slim legs and huge feet. Okay, so if this goes through the same thing again, I'm just gonna have to skip it. Yeah, let's do it. Ah, oh, crap. Well. Oh, wait, there we go. Skip. Thank you. Skip the rest of the movie. Yes, please. <laughs> we saw it once, we don't have to see Dear it again. Lucy, I've opened a detective agency on one of London's most happening streets. Any mystery solved. That's the Leighton Detective Agency's motto. I can't wait to find out what mysteries are waiting for me. We're gonna find out. You must come and visit me if you have the time. Yours faithfully, Catriel. Prologue, Lady and a Tramp. Play our words to Lady and the Tramp. But you get the idea. Phew. There, all done. Hey, you there! <gasps> Talking dog! Who said that? Was it you? Can you really solve any mystery? Oh, a talking dog. You're not surprised? It's only talking. Only talking? Aww. Is it true? Huh? I want some proof. 
Can you really solve any mysteries? I think I'd freak out if I had a dog Stephen randomly talk to me. Like me. <laughs> Let's see you try your poor this puzzle. And we get our first puzzle. And get ready to be hearing the word puzzle. A lot. Care for a cake? Puzzle's worth 20 picarats. The letter K has fallen down from the sign above the cake shop. Use the three triangles to make the letter K inside the box. Place the hand over a triangle using the left stick and pick up the triangle by holding A. Once you've grabbed it, you can rotate with the left stick. Rotate with L and R. Release A to place the triangle in position. When the K is formed, the success message will be displayed automatically. Place the triangles carefully. Alright, so... We have to try and make the letter K. Now... How did I do this? Um... Crud! It's the first puzzle and I don't remember how you did it! That's how long ago I've been, it's been since I played this game. Uh, let's see... Oh, wait! I think I got it. Go... There. We're not actually trying to make a K with... The triangles themselves. We need the outline. So about there. Now the question is about positioning. Mm. I gotta make it look like a K. Um. Oh, wait. Maybe I'm doing it the wrong way. Maybe... No. I need to be this way in order to get the two points. Oh, wait. I see it now. Okay. Over there. Move this. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe this has to be moved over more? Come on. I can see the K, but I'm trying to get this squared away pretty well. Hmm. Yeah, this has to be at the far end. Come on. Get. Get there. Hmm. So I'm looking at the picture at the bottom. And I need this the side to be straight here, but it's still looking cockeyed. Hmm. Uh, it's already the first puzzle. It's already kicking my butt. Yeah, because here's the point part for K. But I need this now to straighten out. Hmm. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ah, this is... This is getting silly. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's what have to be there. So what do I use the tiny ones for? Okay. So, trying to visualize this now in my head. K goes like this. Wait a minute. I think I just got a little closer. Maybe. I think now. There we go. Got it. This is an interesting one. And Puzzle solved. You did it! The sign is fixed and the shop is open again. Mmm. Care for a cake, anyone? Pick rats are both a commodity you earn by completing puzzles and a measure of puzzle difficulty. The higher a puzzle's pick rat's value is, the harder that puzzle will be. Each time you get a puzzle wrong, the available pick rats diminish. So think carefully before you answer. The special end of game save includes some bonuses, among which you'll find a top secret file. The more pick rats you've amassed while playing the game, the more earth shattering the uh, revelation. Bleh, not revelations, revelations you'll find inside. All right, you seem to be up to scratch. Thank you. Why don't you step inside? I cannot pay you with money, I can pay you with licks. <laughs> so, what can I do for you? Look at me. It's obvious. I'm oh. ugly. I'm a talking dog. Yeah. Yes, I can see that. And. And. <sighs> All right then. And I have total amnesia. Ah, a dog with amnesia. If I could just remember my parents, it might make more sense. I feel like I'm me, but not really me. I don't even know if I'm pedigree. Is that all? No, that's not all. I love I his one to find out who I really am. Oh, uh, I don't know. Oh, come on. I'm a talking dog. Got anything else? A diabolical box that kills you? Second game. A letter from the future. Third game. A relic from an ancient civilization. Fifth game. Nothing like that? <laughs> Nothing. Well, this is my first inquiry. Perhaps it's fate. All right, then. Any clues? Well, not everyone can hear me talking. Some can, some can't. It's very rare to find someone who can, actually. <gasps> that, that dog, it just spoke. That makes two people. <sighs> And here's another rare someone who can hear you talk. Who's this? Apparently, he's my assistant. I told him I don't need help, but he won't listen. Overly dog it. No one wants that. Well, what's all this about, Miss Layton? This talking dog wants me to solve the mystery of who he is and where he comes from. So, we've had our first inquiry. Incredible, Miss. Such a fascinating case from day one. Your reputation obviously precedes you. Crocky. So, I don't believe And that's Australia. Never mind. Yeah. Ernest. Ernest grieves, miss. Um. <sighs> That's just what he's like. I see. Um, have, have I said something wrong? Ooh, it looks good. Uh, anyway. I, I can't even remember my own name. Uh, well, do you remember anything else at all? I've got a vague memory of a tower or something falling down, and then lightning flashing across the sky. That's it. Oh, goodness, golly, not much to go on, is it? God you threw you from you. the sky. Oh, <laughs> it certainly isn't. I've no other cases at the moment, so why not? I'll do what I can. You will? Well, that's great! Oh, but I must insist on my fee, even for man's best friend. Oh, I'm not poor. Ah. Well, here's the paperwork then. Now, you'll need a name. How about Sherl? Sherl? You said you can't remember your name. 
So, I've thought of one for you. With inspiration from the famous Sherlock Holmes. It really suits you. Funny enough, never seen any oh, of the Sherlock movies and shows. Sir. Being named after such a prestigious figure, I mean. Like I said, who asked you? anyway. <laughs> Look. Here. Sherl O.C. Combs. Sherl is a great name. Sherl, girl. <laughs> Don't yes, Sherl. Stop calling me that. Surely there's no need to get angry. Cat, are you in? Ah. Inspector Hastings. Man, that has a very long face. And a big old schnoz. Save your progress. Uh, not that one. That's from a few years ago. Inspector Hastings, whatever's the matter? You look positively beside yourself. You won't believe what's happened! Who is this loudmouth, long-nosed nurk? He's got more color than me! This is Inspector Hastings, Cheryl, from Scotland Yard. Despite appearances, he's actually responsible for ensuring London's safety. What's that mutt doing here? Don't tell me you've gone and bought yourself a pet cat. A pet! A pet! Do I look like a pet? Don't answer that. Ah, <laughs> uh, it looks as though Inspector Hastings can't understand what you're saying, Cheryl. Well, of course he can't. Like I said, it's an exclusive club. Most people just hear woofs and barks. And yet, in a straw poll of those present here, two out of the three are in the club. Very exclusive. I can't help it if Super Snitch here isn't one of the enlightened ones. What are you muttering about, Kate? Sorry, Inspector. To answer your question, no, Shirley here isn't a pet. Rather, he's my very first client. The first to have signed on the dotted line and entrust my services. Well, strictly speaking, miss, he can't sign anything, of course. He's digitally impaired. An excellent observation, Ernest. Then let me rephrase that, then. The first to have put his paw print on my paperwork. Eh? Is this some kind of wind-up? Well, anyway, he ain't got no time to be discussing pets. I've got a case I need you on, cat, and I need you on it right now. How intriguing. Why the urgency? And why do you need me in particular, Inspector? Because we all know you're the best. You've proved that when you've helped me out the best. With your little gray sails on the case, we'll have it solved in no time. I think. I hope. Well, probably. His confidence you is inspiring, cat. Don't you worry, Inspector. There's not a case in the world that Miss Layton couldn't crack. Any mystery solved. That's the Layton Detective Agency motto, you know. Well, let's hope you can put your money where your mouth is, because we need all the help we can get on this one. Perhaps it's time you told us what this actually happened, Inspector. Well, it's hard to believe, to be honest. I mean, you never expect something like that to get nicked. Something's been stolen? A burglary case, is it? Of sorts, yeah, but not your average run of the mill burglary. This affects everyone in London and the all of Britain. Gosh, really? Whatever could be so important? I think you better just come to the scene. Then I'll explain everything. That sounds like a very good idea. Lead the way. Hello, isn't there a little matter we're forgetting here? What about figuring out my trial identity? Oh, yes. Well, the trouble is. This new case just sounds a lot more interesting. Oh, wow, that's bad That's bad taste for being in a business. Interesting. You decide which cases to investigate best and how interesting they are to you. Exactly. I'm glad you understand. Well, pardon me for only being a talking dog. I really must try harder to be more interesting. Oh, now, Shirley, don't be like that. Your case is important to us, but we're experiencing a high volume of inquiries at present. And you've had one new inquiry. One. Never mind. Clearly the inspector here has his knickers in a twist about something. Let him jump the queue if he has to. Good. That's that settled then. Now let's get to the scene and start investigating. Where are we going, inspector? Just down the road as it happens. To Big Ben. Big Ben? The Elizabeth Tower, I presume? Not Burley Benjamin, who lives a few doors down, surely? Case 1. The Hand That Feeds. Ooh, 
Ooh, one of the hands of the clock's missing. Oh, the little hour hand. Good gracious, the hour hand. It's missing. Yup, I'm afraid so. It was reported to us this morning. So that's what this is all about? One of the hands from the clock tower has been stolen? Unbelievable, isn't it? We gotta catch the hooligan who did it and get and back in quick small. That came out so choppy. But there are four clock faces on the Elizabeth Tower, aren't there? If this one hour hand is missing, the other three faces still show the correct time, surely? That's right. I mean, certainly. It may be a little inconvenient, perhaps, but to describe this as affecting all of Britain? Isn't that rather an exaggeration? Yeah, my better half said the same thing. But it's much worse than that bit of inconvenience not knowing the right time. Problem is, we're due to a visit tomorrow from Ambassador F Oh, dear. Fo du Fafa. Oh, yes. I remember reading about it in the Times. It's the anniversary of the Treaty of Rome, isn't it? But what does that have to do with the Elizabeth Tower? The ambassador is going to be received at the venue inside of the Houses of Parliament in Big Ben. And as a symbol of the timeless friendship and cooperation between our two lands, they planned on giving him a present. A pendant modeled in the hands of Big Ben. Oh dear! Yeah, so you can only imagine that the conversation's got to turn to the subject of the clock tower at some point. And it's not going to look too clever if the very hands of the pendant modeled on have been avenged by some low-life scoundrel the Matt can't catch. Obviously, it'll be plastered all over the foreign press as well. It's a blooming disgrace is what it is. I see, so that's why you're intent on tracking down the culprit and recovering the missing hand before tomorrow's engagement. Exactly. We really need your help on this one, Cat. Of course, I'll do everything I can. Our national pride is at stake here, as you say. Well, that's a relief. I was worried you turned me down. Obviously, Scotland Yard will be carrying on with its own investigations at the same time. It's all hands on deck. I've got officers scouring the area around the tower, so you can ask them if they got any leads. Leave it to me, Inspector. We'll get started at once. Gosh, miss, it's so rousing when you take the bull by the horns like this. Oh, no. No, wait a minute. What now? Well, as this is our first case since the establishment of the Leighton Detective Agency, I'd better show you the ropes. Let me explain how I like to carry out my investigations. Oh yes, please do, Miss Leighton. In investigation mode, the cursor on the screen changes to be a magnifying glass. Use the left stick to move the magnifying glass around and examine every inch of the scene. Sometimes, when you move the magnifying glass over a particular point, it will turn orange. When you identify a point of interest like that, press A to find out what's there. You could also use the directional buttons to quickly snap the magnifying glass between people and other areas of interest. You need to master both controls. So, the left stick to move the magnifying glass around, or the directional buttons to choose an area of interest rapidly. Alright, I think I've got the hang of that. What the hang of licking your boots? Yep. <coughs> Sorry. I mean, you're a fast learner, Pinstripes. Yeah, yeah, he's quite the brown noser. So let's get straight down to business and start investigating. Let's start with the top of that lamppost, shall we? Use the left stick. Okay, so right there. You found a hit coin. Golly, a little coin dropped down, look. Yes, that's a hint coin. They could buy you hints when you're solving puzzles. Of course, like real money, once you spend them, they're gone. So only use them when you really need to. You'll find them hidden in all sorts of places, so leave no stone unturned. I see, so hit coins are shy little creatures, are they? Come on, cat, what are you doing there for, eh? The case, woman, the case! Now, now, Inspector, less haste, more speed. Investigations need to be carried out carefully, above all. You must record everything at each step. <laughs> Teaching grandma to suck eggs, aren't you? <laughs> oh, that saying reminds me of an old Ren and Stimpy episode. <laughs> Where it was... What was the guy's name from the record? Funky Winkle Teats? <laughs> One of the lyrics is... I'll teach your grandma how to suck eggs. 
<laughs> uh, let's just go over the most important items in my bag. Select the bag icon in the bottom left corner of the screen to open up the bag menu. Or you can just press X. Cat's journal contains all my notes about the investigation so far. Very useful for recapping. To archive the case history, choose save from the menu. That'll make a record of the story so far. This is the puzzle index. Any puzzles we encounter are recorded in here, so you can tackle ones you've already completed again if the mood takes you. <coughs> and there's a brand new puzzle in Daily Puzzles every single day. If you also delve into my wardrobe from time to time, I could pop into some different outfits. Blimey, you got enough in that bag of yours, Cat! You ever heard of tidying? It's this crazy idea where you actually get rid of stuff you don't need. Oh no, it's perfectly fine as it is. The trick with any handbag is to know where to find everything and what to use when. Good, that's covered the fundamentals of investigative process. Now it's time to put theory into practice and investigate the clock tower. The clocks are awfully high off the ground though, aren't they? Then you must zoom in, Ernest. Zoom in, miss? How do you do that? Sometimes you may notice the magnifying glass color changing to blue instead of orange while you're investigating. That indicates a place where you can zoom in and take a closer look. All you have to do is press A and everything will appear large. Very natty. Well, it's extremely important to be thorough when you're investigating, you see. So why don't you zoom in now and take a closer look at the clock face? Alright, so... There we go. No! Shoot. That's just showing me all this stuff again. What was it? Why? How did I do it again? No! Oh, I just... Okay. It's true. The shorthand really is missing. Ah, uh, but of course the other fa clock faces have all... Have... All have both hands. Blech. Yeah, it's only on the one side that the short hand's been taken. The other three are unaffected. Oh, so it's just one short hand that we're looking for. Even a, even a short hand from one of the clocks on the Big Ben clock tower would be a very sizable object. Not something that would have disappear easily. Obviously, we've searched all around the clock face as well as the base of the tower. But that hand's just disappeared into thin air. <laughs> this is turning into a very interesting case indeed. A court on London doesn't know what time it is, and you call it interesting? Alright, now that we know what we're dealing with, it's time we started investigating. We should start by stepping back and looking at the bigger picture again. So select zoom out, or just press B. There we go. Where do we start, Miss Layton? Well, time is of the essence. We have to solve this before Ambassador Fodufafa arrives tomorrow. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that name even remotely correctly. Let's begin by asking Inspector Hastings' team what they've learned so far. That's right. Why do you work yourself when you can get someone else to do it for you? Nonsense, sir. We can't afford to duplicate effort after that's all. Of course. Come along then, you two. No time to lose. Coming, miss. Alright, so, now we got rain. Let's, uh, start examining stuff. Nothing there. Ah, the Elizabeth Tower is actually joined on to the Palace of Westminster, I see. Okay. Wait, tree? Ah, it's rather pleasant here with all the greenery, don't you think? Um. What about the, uh... Oh, wait! I had something. Hey, another coin. Wait, oh, I see something. Uh, uh. Another coin. Nice. Hmm. And I guess I can only talk to Hastings. Inspector Hastings, can you summarize what you found out so far? Not a fat lot, really. There was a bobby on the beat here last night who confirmed nothing was amiss at 11.50. It wasn't until 6 this morning that we got a report from a stunned local who had happened to glance at the clock. 
came to confirm the report straight away and found it to be true. The hour hand is well and truly gone. Hmm, so at 11.50 last night, the clock was fine. But by 6 this morning, the hand was missing. So we're looking at a window of about six hours in which the crime was committed. That's about the size of it, yup. And wasn't there anybody else who looked at the clock tower in that six hour window? We're looking in that now. I've got officers asking locals if they saw anything. There must be someone who looked at the clock in all that time. No doubt if we went door to door, we could find some witnesses. We just don't have that kind of time. So we just have to manage with what we know already, you mean? Pretty much. And those hands are massive. It would have taken someone a fair old while to make it off with it, that's for sure. Hmm. Six hours. Oh. Six-hour window. Fit the clue in the right place. Which would go... Here. You found a clue. Six-hour window. As your investigation progresses, you'll unearth certain key pieces of information that form clues. Each case has six clues to uncover, and once you've found all six, you'll be able to solve the case. Clues may arise from statements that appear to have nothing to do with anything. Can you use your sleuthing skills to piece it all together? If you want to look at the clues you've gathered so far, open Catrail's bag and look at the current case file. We need to refresh your memory about a case, the case file is in the place to look. Alright, so, six hour window. According to Inspector Hastings, the clock hand must have been stolen in a roughly six hour window between 11.50 p.m. last night and 6 a.m. this morning. And that's all we got so far. Ah, it's so exciting to be investigating a case at last. What do we do first, miss? We'll start by interviewing members of the public, Ernest. Gosh, that sounds like proper detective work. Let's find out if anyone around here has noticed what's wrong with the clock tower, and if they might have useful information for us. There are rather a lot of passers-by here, aren't there? How do we know who to ask? The more people we talk to, the better. So, let's get started. When there's more than one place to investigate next, you'll see multiple magnifying glasses icons displayed at the top right of the screen in investigation mode. Once you've examined one of those places, it will be marked with a, with a tick icon. I would just call it a check mark. So keep an eye on the magnifying glass icons and tick icons at the top right of the screen as you're hunting for clues. Oh, and we actually have selections for a few more people. So let's talk to you. <laughs> well, how long's it been, would you say? How long? I'm sorry, do we know each other? I'm fairly sure I've never met you before, sir. Know each other? In a way, yes. In a way, no. I think your scarf's too tight. People like leaves washed along in a river. Sometimes meeting, sometimes parting. You've rather lost me, I'm afraid. I, um, don't suppose you noticed anything about the Elizabeth Tower last night, did you? I was already dreaming sweetly by nightfall yesterday. You're an early sleeper, are you? So you wouldn't have seen anything. <laughs> Is that all you wanted? I tell you what, how about a puzzle to occupy the mind? I say a puzzle? The world is full of puzzles, Ernest. Y yes, it is. Sometimes during the course of investigation, people do come up with puzzles for you to solve. It's all part of the process. So let's see what sort of puzzle we're dealing with here. Alright. Puzzle number two. Puzzle number two. The Hands of Time. The clock is currently showing the time as 3.30 p.m. It would be nice if the hands of the clock would show midnight. What would be the minimum number of places you need to touch on the clock to show the desired time? Select the answer frame to display the input screen for entering letters and numbers. After confirming, you'll see what you have written appear in the answer frame. To change your answer, simply select the answer frame again. Alright, so... The clock is currently showing the time as 3.30 p.m. It would be nice if the hands of the clock would show midnight. What would be the minimum number of places you need to touch on the clock to show the desired time? I think the answer is zero. Because if you like sleep, 
and then wake up, it could just show midnight. Right? So let's try it. Zero. I've seen how to solve this now. I think I'm right! Are made for solving. You did it! There was no need to touch the clock at all. All you needed to do was wait for midnight to come. Oh, okay, so yeah, sleep and midnight will come. You don't have to touch anything. Very impressive. Let's hope you tackle all the puzzles you're going to face so convincingly. Top of the morning to ya! Got a minute to answer a few questions? Oh, um, uh, alright. I'm investigating the extraordinary disappearance of a little end of Big Ben, see? So did either you happen to see any figure on these parts last night? Such as, for instance, a person of persons transporting a large and end like object? Gosh, he gets straight to the point, doesn't he? He's asking the very questions I was about to ask him. Oh, where's me manners? Eh? Sorry, I'm Douglas Dett. Everyone calls me Doug. I'm a reporter with the London Times, see? Are you readers at all? Oh, I'll say. Personally, I think the London Times is the best paper in the city. Ha <laughs> you're too kind, lad. Although I do make it my mission to dig up the most dirtiest of dirt and uncover the most unsavory of suits. And at present, as I mentioned aforementionedly, I am investigating the disappearance of Big Ben's hand. As it happens, we're investigating the same thing. Perhaps you might share anything you've learned? Sorry, investigate, you say? Well, there's a turn up for the books. You don't like, you don't look like detectives, I must say. If I'd had to guess, I'd have begged you as a young couple walking your lovely dog on this delightful morning. Well, I am a detective. Haven't you ever heard of Leighton Detective Agency? Leighton? I know of the famous Professor Leighton, of course. But I didn't realize he had an agency or people in his employ. Always nice to have signed up with a complete unknown. Really inspires confidence. Oh, what a blow. Mind you, I don't really expect any different. Don't worry, Miss Layton. You'll be famous soon enough. I'm quite certain of that. Anyway, as it happens, I was in the office all the evening yesterday, and in my latest article, I did not observe Big Ben at all. And I'm afraid to say that my own investigation is just getting underway. I have nothing to impart at the present time. I see. Well, thank you anyway. I wish you all the very best with your ongoing investigative activities, of course. Likewise, sir. Good luck with yours. And hiccup for iconic Big Ben. Petty crime or international conspiracy? Alarm bells ring across Britain. <laughs> Stories like these write themselves, eh? Garby thinks it's gonna be a smasher. It certainly is. If we don't solve this before the store breaks, there'll be all kinds of repercussions. You're right. We must press on with our investigation. We've investigated all we can around here. I suggest we head closer to the tower. To the scene of the crime at last. I say this is rather exciting. Ah, I need to explain to you how we move around during an investigation, don't I? At the bottom right of the screen in investigation mode, you'll see a shoe button. Pressing that or Y switches from invent bleh, investigation mode to relocation mode. It's not a chunkla, I promise. <laughs> the orange flashing markers show points on the map where we can move to. Pick a location you'd like to visit and press A over it to display some information about the place in question. Then simply press A a second time or press move to go ahead and move to that location. An exclamation mark at the particular place indicates that you should head there first, or next, for the good of the investigation. It looks like we can get inside the Elizabeth Tower from the entrance there. So, let's head over and see what we can find out. Aw, oh, she looks cute in a little pixelated form. Alright, so... There's nothing else. Uh, yeah, I don't see see anything else. Okay. Go move here. The clock tower housing Big Ben that presides over London. No entry without permission. <clears throat> oh, 
Oh! The entrance to the clock tower looks to be over there. Oh, the police officers seem to be examining something. Let's ask them what they found. Oh, we got a few people. Policeman, got a notebook, and a runner. One, two, one, two. Oh, hi there. Perfect weather for a run, isn't it? It must be a pleasant place for jogging here with all the green space. Yes, I love it. I've done 50 laps already today. 50? I'm good run, by the way. I've been running in cities all around the world. I just can't get enough. I like marathons and other events, but ordinary city streets are my favorite place to run. I just love exercising as much as watching other people going about their business. I like doing puzzles to exercise my brain, too. And to keep my mind off of my aching muscles. I, tr I just came across a great one, actually. Try it. All right, next puzzle. Puzzle number three, Bubble Blast. Shoot bubbles from the cannon to burst all the bubbles floating in the air. To pop bubbles, you need to form a chain linking bubbles of the same number horizontally and or vertically. The chain must contain at least as many bubbles as the number displayed on the bubbles in it. Press and hold A to pick up a bubble and move it to an empty space. Ammo is replenished after each shot, but you need to burst all the bubbles within the maximum shot limit. To reposition an object in a location, press and hover A over it to pick it up again. And move it to where you would like it to be. Just release A to place it in its new position. Okay. In some puzzles, you can use the L and R while you have A pressed down to rotate the object you're currently holding. The amount it will rotate varies from puzzle to puzzle. Okay. The bubbles on the left are the ones that have not yet been fired. Press and hold A over a bubble to pick it up and move it. If you move a bubble over the board and then release A, the bubble will be fired from the cannon onto the square where you placed it. The number displayed in the cannon shows the number of shots available. Bubbles you have shot already are replenished, so you can shoot bubbles of the same number multiple times. There is a limit to the number, total number of shots the cannon can fire, though. Uh, okay. Um. Okay, I had to figure this one out here. Hmm. And I don't want to pick them up in order, so... Hmm. Alright, I have to f see how this works. So... Okay. Okay. Um... There? Alright, three... Here. Three... Here. Two there. Oh, I think I got this. Four. Four. And then this one. Two. Got it. This is an interesting one. Puzzles are made for solving. Not bad. Not bad. You did it. All the bubbles have popped. If you don't get the order right, you run out of shots. Yes, that's it. Minus one. One, two, one, two. All right, I'm ready to push on. Beat the pain. Ha <laughs> ha, good luck. I'm going to stay in London for a while, I think. There are lots of places around the city where I'd like to run. I want to make sure I see as much of it as I can while I'm here. Maybe I'll see you around sometime. Bye then. Nice. All right, what about you, good sir? Hello, Miss, um, let me see. Oh, yes, that's right. Miss Layton, Inspector Hastings mentioned you. He, um... Ah, yes, here it is. You're assisting with our investigations, I see, so we're to share information and resources. Thank you, officer. That would be very helpful. Another on the ball detective, is it? Yes, this is DC Nick Booker, one of Inspector Hastings' men. Nick Booker? thrown into the profession, was he? Perhaps you'd be so kind as to tell us what you've learned about the case so far? Yes, well, according to our inquiries, it seems there's been an outbreak of, um, ah, yes, of metal theft in the capital recently. 
Metal theft? Um, yes, I think that's what it says here. Yes, metal being stolen from factories and warehouses. Really? What on earth would anyone steal pieces of metal for? You would be surprised, actually. Oh, I don't remember how many years ago with this, this happened, but... There was a metal shortage, and people were actually stealing manhole covers from, I think, like, places in New York, New Jersey, California, a whole bunch of places. Just all the manhole covers, the round ones, square ones, whatever, just pulled right off the streets to sell for straight scrap. Some metals are valuable, Ernest, and thieves can sell scrap made from them for a high price. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, according to my notes here, the missing clock hand was made of, um... Ah, yes, here it is. A very valuable metal that would fetch for a good price of soul. So we're continuing along this line of investigation. I see. Metal theft. Well, thank you for the help, DC Booker. Don't mention it, madam. I'm just doing what it says here in my notebook. Alright! And we got a clue! Metal thefts. Uh, this one goes here. Alright, according to DC Booker, there's been a recent s spate? Spat? Spate? Of metal thefts in the capital. Certain types of scrap metal sold for considerable sums of money. And... Officer! Oh, he needs a super deep... Yep, he, he needs one. Hello, 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 Miss Layton. Inspector Hastings has instructed us all to give you full cooperation. Wonderful, so I don't need to explain. Could you just tell us what you found out so far? I'd be glad to, miss. We have to certain that on the night in question, that being last night, there was no one at- No one at all? Not even a janitor or something? Correct. There's a room behind the large clock faces up, known as the clock room. However, this room was locked overnight. So is the clock tower always empty overnight? Except for when work's ongoing, yes. When the servicemen are in, they sometimes work late, apparently. But last night, the servicemen knocked off early, it seems. So there was no one around who might have seen the thief. Sorry not to have better news for you. Now we've spoken to the investigating officers, I think it's time we had a look inside the clock tower. But it's locked, isn't it? Should we talk to PC Beats, do you think? Excuse me, PC... PC Beat? I'm gonna say Beat. It looks like Beat. Would you be so good as to allow us entry into the clock tower? Why, yes, of course! Inspector Hastings gave us instructions to cooperate fully with you, Miss Lighton. Step right in. Thank you. We'll all come in, if we may. I must warn you, it's one long staircase when you get inside. I hope your, your leg muscles are working. Oh, um, yes. Reminds me of the trip I took with the family to the Statue of Liberty. If you ever been inside the Statue of Liberty, the staircase in there is so long, it wraps around forever. There's no, at that time, there was no elevator or anything. I don't know if people can even go there anymore. Alright, so, let me see if there's anything here. Now we're so close to the tower, you can't actually see the clock faces, can you? Hmm. Anything else? Oh, eh, 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 eh. Apparently, the style of architecture is called Gothic Revival. Huh, learn something new. I don't think you can gain entry to the tower from inside the palace. But I'm looking for those coins. Uh. Oh, they all say something different. Huh. But not seeing any coins anywhere. Darn. Alright, so I gotta move. Nope. Move to here. The housing of the Great Clock. Mechanism in the Elizabeth Tower. Ooh. Geary. <sighs> Golly. <sighs> what a... <sighs> lot of stairs. My feet are... <sighs> killing me. Ernest. <sighs> Geez. <sighs> you 
You should be uh, ashamed of yourself getting uh, tired out so uh, easily. You're panting harder than he is. Oh, look. It's spectacular. I've never seen the internals of the clock tower before. Magnificent. Being inside such a huge and important landmark like this is rather splendid, isn't it? The clock face and the cogs are so enormous. Yes, it's quite exciting being allowed inside a pe place that's off-limits to most people. All right, you two, get over yourselves. Ah, I've just remembered something I forgot to mention before. Oh, what's that? Sometimes, as you're investigating, you come across something unexpected. Unexpected, miss? Yes, as you're moving the magnifying glass around, you might notice a peculiar disturbance in some places. Like a puff of dust, almost. When that happens, be sure to investigate thoroughly, even if the magnifying glass hasn't turned orange. Look hard enough, and you're sure to be rewarded. So make sure you investigate all those nooks and crannies carefully. Let's give it a try now. Okay. Uh, you were like over here? Yes. Hey, you discovered the reddish wristwatch. A collection box has been added to Catrail's bag. There you can per peruse items that you found during the course of your investigations. The items are unrelated to any particular case. They're just for fun. So enjoy them at your leisure. You never know what you might find while you're hunting for clues. So leave no stone unturned, Ernest. Not one, Miss Layton. Very good. So let's get back to the task at hand. Ah, I think perhaps that's a serviceman over there. Look. Oh, yes, you're right. Let's go and ask him if he has any useful information for us. Hello, swirly eyes. But first, I'm going to take a look at this other stuff. The mechanism is vast as well, isn't it? And it keeps ticking, despite being on, despite being one hand down. It's lucky there are three other faces showing the correct time. The people of London rely on Big Ben to know the time. Unfortunately, in this day and age, that's not true because everyone has a tiny computer in their pocket. Uh, what else? Oh! Puzzle! Both hands present and correct on this face, at least. That would be a good puzzle, wouldn't it? On the face, but I have no eyes, no ears, and no mouth. I do have hands, however. What am I? As it happens, though, there's a different puzzle here. Look, do you want to try it? Well, I am the per personal assistant of the great detective Miss Catriel Layton. So I ought to tackle a puzzle or two from time to time. Okay, what kind of puzzle do we have? Puzzle 4, Houses of Hanoi. A new design of houses allows you to arrange the floors however you like. Just like the building to hoist off the topmost floor with a crane and move it to another plot of land. Your task is to make all the houses look as they appear on the plans. However, Houses can only have up to four floors max. Oh, so this is like Tower of Catan, sort of? Alright, so it's got to be blue, red, yellow, pink. And I think I need to try doing this in the fewest amount of moves. Um, well, it doesn't say I am have a limited amount of moves. So let's see here. Um, I need to get the reds on the bottom. So, let's pull that. We got there. Uh, red there. That there. There. Oh. Okay, uh, I think right now the best thing I can do is wing it. Also, why am I going for red? I want you to go for blue. Okay. Hmm. 
All right, let's move these around. For now. Move this here. Now the question now is to get this blue to the bottom of somewhere else. Okay, move that there. Move that here. Move that there. All right, blues are done. Now for red. Oh. Mm. All right, move this house here. There. Move this back. Keep that at the top. Okay. That that's done. Next is yellow. Okay. That's done. Now I just need to exchange that to that. Here to here and here to here. Woo! So in conclusion. Puzzle song. Patch on Miss Layton, of course. You did it. Both houses look spot on. Nice. Good work, Pinstripes. You're clawing back some respect, Earl. Why, thank you, sir. While merely a personal assistant to Miss Layton, I do hope to prove myself useful in the puzzle-solving department. I really don't remember saying I wanted a personal assistant. Oh, dear, miss. Please don't reject me. Aw. Uh, Alright, what else we got? Um... Anything on this side? The clock faces are so vast, it's really rather strange seeing them from this inside. But apart from the missing hand, that doesn't appear to be anything out of the ordinary. Uh, don't see. Oh, wait. Wheel? Coin! Nice. Oh, wait. Wait, wait. There's more machinery underneath us, too. Okay, anything else? Uh, don't see anything else. Alright, talk to you. Hey, what are you doing inside? No entry to public. It's alright, I'm from the Leighton Detective Agency. The police have given us permission to investigate here. You're a serviceman for the Great Clock, I take it? No, yes, I'm Hans. Hans Lipsky. If this is for the missing hand, I already said to police everything I know. You people are drilling a hole in my belly. Well, I'm sorry to ask you to repeat yourself, but would you mind telling us what you told the police, Mr. Lipsky? Lipsky? Ken Lipsky? We can't help his name, Cheryl. There is nothing for telling. When hand went missing, I was already at my home. I don't know nothing. You went home early yesterday, I understand. Day before, I was working until after midnight fixing this clock. So yesterday I go home early. Was there anything unusual about the hand that was taken? It wasn't loose or misaligned or anything? No, I fixed it only two days ago, like I tell you. When I put it back, I make sure it is good fixed on. I see. So there's no chance that the hand dropped off then. Slipped out of your hands, perhaps? Police already investigate everything in here around Clockface, but they find nothing and they have gone now. Yes, tell me, Mr. Lipsky. When did you notice that the hand was missing? Same time like everyone else. When I look out of window in morning, I see missing hand. Oh, so where you live is inside of the clock tower? And in sight of the face with the missing hand, I see. No, oh, yes, I am living close to here, on Chancellor Lane. Gosh, how extraordinary. The same street that the agency is on. It's strange that we didn't notice the hand was missing ourselves. Exactly. I'm sure I remember seeing it when I looked at the clock tower this morning. Because you were looking at different face. It depends on where you are living. Okay. Oh, we got another clue. Fit the clue, which is right here. Recently repaired hour hand. 
The clock tower serviceman, Hans Lipsky, claims that he confirmed the hour hand was firmly reattached after he repaired it the day before yesterday. Really, apart from the missing hour hand, nothing seems to be out of place. Golly, there are no clues at all. I would have expected to see some trace of the crime. After all, it's such a large object to make off with. We need more information. Let's go back down to the ground. There's something I'd like to ask Inspector Hastings. I knew this time would come. The descent. It's alright for you, but I'm taking my life in my paws climbing down these stairs. Ah, yes, with your short little legs. Get off! <laughs> oh, that was mean! Now, now, Cheryl, it's safer this way. Ernest will carry you down. Won't you, Ernest? I will. Hey, what did you pull that face for? I haven't got fleas, you know. I, I didn't pull a face. Come along, no arguing. Just tread carefully, Ernest. Yes, miss. Alright, so we're going back to Hastings. Oh, and daily bonus. Once per day, you can obtain fashion farthings via the daily bonus. You can use fashion farthings you've saved up in the wardrobe section of Cat's Bag to purchase outfits. However, be careful of changing your Nintendo Switch console system time, because you won't be able to obtain the daily bonus for a short while if you do. You might also uncover fashion farthings during the course of your investigations around London. So keep your eyes peeled. More hidden stuff. Lo lovely. I need to get here. Okay. There's Inspector Hastings. Look, even from this distance, I can see the furrows in his brow. Perhaps his investigation isn't going very well, miss. Hello, Hastings. Oi, cat! What have you got for me? Where did who did it then? Who's the culprit? Please, Inspector, calm down. I'm still in the middle of my investigation. Oh, I see. I have a quick question for you, actually. According to Mr. Lipsky, your officers examine the clock face, is that right? Yeah, of course. I had them check the clock room, the clock face, and all around outside as well. But there are no clues, no fingerprints, nothing. There really are no traces at all, are there? Well, I had them take samples from the floor and the walls, and from the clock face. They're being analyzed back at the yard now. When will the results be ready? Shouldn't be much longer. So, what's your next move? I think we'll head back to Chancer Lane. We will? You mean we're going back to the office, Miss Layton? You can't do that. We haven't got anywhere yet. I need your attention on this case, cat. Inspector Hastings, please. You mustn't be so blinkered. Sometimes you have to take a step back in order to see things for what they really are. Is that so? Yes, so if you excuse us. Hey, you're not serious. Yeah, we're very serious. Are you sure leaving the scene is the best idea, Kit? Yes, of course. Come along now, you two. Let's get back to Chancer Lane. It's no distance. We'll be there in a jiffy on the bike. Oh, yes. I should explain about how we move around during an investigation. Examining the bike with the magnifying glass is the best way to cover long distances. Select the destination and either press A or the move button to head the way. Oh, and you can also press plus or go by bicycle in relocation mode as well. It works in just the same way. The next place to visit in terms of the investigation is highlighted with an exclamation mark in relocation mode too. So your trusty bicycle will come in handy investigation mode in relocation mode then. Ms. Layton, splendid! Precisely. So back to Chancellor Lane it is. Okay. Chancellor Lane it is. On the move. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, and yeah, it is missing a hand over here. Well, here we are. Chancellor Lane Corner. There are a lot of interesting shops around here, aren't there? It's such a lively place. We're here for a mini break, are we? Good idea. First, let's have something to eat. Huh? You know the old maxim. A rumbling tummy is a detective's downfall. 
No one says that. <laughs> of course they do. Well, they should do anyway. You know, thinking about it, I don't know this street very well at all. Even though it's where the agency is located. This is a perfect opportunity to have a stroll down the lane and get better acquainted with our neighborhood. Walkies, eh? Well, at least I don't have to be on a lead. You are a chef, but you also look like a giant goofball. <laughs> and you are a sailor. And can I talk to you? No? Alright, so... Oh! Uh, 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 uh. There is no downfall, only a graceful decline. <laughs> How are you doing, Beanie? You can see the clock face with the missing hand from here. Yeah, and usually that slow descent turns into, uh... You turn kind of chubby. <laughs> so you gotta be careful. Uh, what else? Going! I'm glad you're doing good. And glad you decided to hang out. Another coin. Any. Oh, wait! Eh, 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 eh. Puzzle! <laughs> well, who knew? I was so just sniffing around and suddenly I found a puzzle at the end of my muzzle. That happens, Cheryl. Puzzles get everywhere, you see. I'm doing alright. No complaints. I cooked a really nice dinner today, so I'm glad I can add that to my list of things I am able to cook. And seeing as you found it, you can solve it. Why me? Because I want to see if you're worth keeping on. Go on, see if you can pound it out. Let's see, puzzle five, alien attack. Use a special beam cannon to wipe out the fleet of UFOs that have appeared over the streets of London. Each UFO has a number on it, and this is the number of times you must hit it to destroy it. All UFOs must be destroyed. Each beam has enough energy to travel along one line only. You can choose the direction of the beam, but you cannot travel along the same line twice. To fire, select where you like your beam to travel. Okay. I can only choose 11 lines. There's a 4 here. And a bunch of 1s and a 2. Alright, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Wait. Let's try doing this since I can do it. 1, 2, 3, 4. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, that won't work. Where am I? I went this. Okay, yeah. So I'm right here in the middle. Uh, all right. So five, four, three, two. Okay, I think I got it. So here, here, here. There. Crap! I need this to pass by again. <laughs> we need Piccolo for that. Yeah, if it was Piccolo with special beam cannon, we'd pretty much just annihilate everything and I wouldn't have to worry about targeting. Alright, so... That way, that way. There. 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 Got it! Yes! I eat puzzles like this for breakfast. That was too easy. Oh, yeah. You did it. You restored peace to the city. Focusing your attacks on the UFO with the highest number while attacking the surrounding UFOs was the key to destroying the whole fleet. <laughs> That's a walk in the park for a hound like me. Oh, jolly good, sir. You can solve puzzles on top of everything else. Top dog. Yes, very impressive, sir. I can see you're going to be very useful. I don't like the sound of that. Alright. Ooh, cake. I smell sugar, even from here with my nose. Hello. 
Arr, this place serves the best seafood in town, so it does. I've sailed the seven seas, and this place tops them all. Now I've had a bellyful. I suppose I should be hidden. Gotta get back to work. Let's see what time's Big Ben gone. Ah, good, at least it's not the Banjanks clock face in view from here. That would have been just my luck. Especially seeing as how I'm left losing me watch and everything. I really rely on the old clock tower now. Gosh, the missing hand of the clock is already inconveniencing people, it seems. Exactly, which is why we need to be pushed on with this investigation, not sampling every dish on the menu. The dude's got tiny hands! <laughs> You're right, he's got tiny hands and tiny feet. But then a big old body, no neck, and a big head, and a big nose. He is weirdly, weirdly proportioned. Oh, look, what a lovely terraced area this restaurant is. Ciao, Bella. Can I take your order, signorina? Haha, <laughs> thank you. Golly, he's a little over familiar, isn't he? Just before we order, I wonder if I could ask you something. Has there been anything unusual happening around here recently? Anything unusual? Hmm. Well, a lot of cutlery has been going missing lately. Forks and spoons and things. Oh, yes, and a silver tray as well. You mean they were stolen? I cannot say. There were no signs of breaking and entering and no cash taken. So it doesn't seem like a burglary, exactly. I see. Well, thank you. Now, would it be all right if I ordered? I'd like the squid egg spaghetti with the fetid herb salad on the side, please. I've always wanted to try squid ink spaghetti. One sec. I need some drink. Throughout the years of watching anime, playing some of these games, and so many times I've seen squid ink, I just want to know what the squid ink tastes like, like properly cooked, because there was a time when I was growing up and we were at a buffet, the people who made the squid there did not properly clean the squid out, and when I took a bite into the food, I ended up having the equivalent of a black sharpie being put on my tongue. And that was absolutely disgusting. Sounds delicious. And then the chef's ominous omelet special, the Hellfire Risotto. And the mushroom surprise nochi, please. All at the same time. And they say dogs have eyes bigger than their bellies. For a minute there, I actually thought you were attempting some serious sleuth work. Squid is good. Never had the ink. Yes, squid is definitely good, but I haven't had the ink if it was properly seasoned or if it has to do something with the ink itself. What did I just tell you, Cheryl? An empty stomach is a detective's worst enemy. Um, okay, I, I must go and write all that down before I forget. Okay, we've got another clue. Missing cutlery. Bam. Found a clue! Cutlery and other silverware has been going missing at the restaurant on Chancer Lane. Possibly related to the recent metal thefts in the capital. Ah, oh, that was absolutely delicious. I do believe I may be full. Maybe you just ate for four! <laughs> Stop making out that I'm a glutton. You and Ernest shared the food too. Yes, and it was yummy. Hmm. Well, anyway, should we be getting back to the investigation now? Good idea, Cheryl. We simply have to recover that hand before Ambassador Fodu Fafa's visit tomorrow. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We've satisfied our appetites, yes. But now we've enjoyed a meal, there's something that must come before anything else. <laughs> Dessert! You want more? <laughs> well, there is a nice-looking cake shop further up the street. Yes, you're right, Ernest. I've admired their cakes through the window for too long. I'd already made up my mind to pay the place a visit before long. This is the perfect excuse. Uh, we're never going to find that hand in time. Man, and you say thin after eating all that food. Jeez! Alright, so... We have to travel to Lipsky's Patis... Oh, God. 
Lipsky's patissiery. Patiss. Patisserie? You're feeding into her. Mmm, <laughs> smell that delicious sweet scent. Seeing all these tasty treats lined up before my eyes is making my tummy rumble. You're hungry after that ten course meal! Haha, <laughs> you know what they say, Cyril. There's always room for a dessert. Now let's investigate all the tempting offerings they have on sale. How about investigating the case? Oh, I say, that pastry chef looks awfully familiar. Do we know him from somewhere? Oh, Alex Lipsky. Must be brother. Hello, looking to take little something on tooth, eh? But you can't decide what? Ah, oh, you're the serviceman from the clock tower. That's it? Yes, it's Mr. Lipsky again. So you run a cake shop as well as being a technician for the clock in the Elizabeth Tower? You must be rather busy. Of course I do not. I'm Alex Lipsky. Running this patisserie is my only job. You mistake me with my twin brother, Hans. He is working in Big Ben, not me. Oh, I see. You have a twin. Well, that explains it. How extraordinary, bumping into both of you on the same day. And how interesting that you've both gone into such different lines of work. Scooby-Doo villain disguise. No, yes. At first, maybe Baker and Technic look poles apart, but there are more similarities than you think. Really? What kind of similarities? We must both be good with hands. We have always had skills to work with complicated things since we were young boys. My Bratzy works with clocks, I work with cakes. But we both must work with our heads and our hands in the same way. It does sound like you've both chosen very difficult professions. No, yes. Anyway, you are coming here to buy cakes, not to talk, I think. Please, take a look and tell me what you want. Thank you, we will. We'll have a good look around at everything. Okay. Oh, hello, little girl. These cakes are simply divine. And so beautifully presented, too. Alex really is so talented. He can make a cake in any shape you care to think of, you know. It all looks so sumptuous. I can never decide what to buy. I think I'll have one of these. No. Yes. No. Yes. Or maybe. <laughs> no. Yes. When I come here, I always end up mimicking the charming way Alex speaks. What a strange place to find a big teddy bear like this. It's so sweet, isn't it? But then it isn't a sweet shop. <laughs> oh, she was not... She was not pleased. That was terrible, Ernest. Truly terrible. Sorry. Anyway, I suppose it's just here's decoration, is it? No, Ernest. I mean, it was absolutely awful. Truly awful. Well, you'll just have to grin and bear it. Okay, that was good. Come on. Oh, wait a minute, though. There's something strange about this bear. Ha ha ha! That is not bear. That is one of my cakes. Really? It's not a real bear? I, I had no idea. You can't tell at all. It's so realistic. Is everything in here actually one of your creations? No, yes, everything you see in my shop is cake or pastry made by me to look like something from everyday life. Well, I can see that you have a rare talent, Mr. Lipsky. That is actually really cool. It is my fun to see how much like real thing I can make with my creations. I use all different ingredients from around the world to make things look exactly like life. At this moment, I experiment with wafer. Well, your efforts are certainly paying off, Mr. Lipsky. These creations are capital. No, yes, my customers like it. They want these cakes for presents for their friends and for parties. Bear is made mostly from wafer as well, and eyes, they are chocolate. Wow, I'm so impressed. Let's have more of a look around, miss. I mean, there is a reason for pause, don't you think?
That's just for you, King Beanie. That is just for you. <laughs> we get... Oh, multicolored macaroon. I never had a macaroon before. I'm pretty sure I never had a macaroon before. Hmm. Aren't these pretty, these cupcakes with the beautiful rose toppings? Okay, what else we got? Mr. Lipsky said that all the ornaments and decorations in the shop were cakes that he'd made, didn't he? Which presumably means that these flowers aren't real flowers, does it? Yes, you're quite right, Ernest. On closer inspection, they are actually made from icing sugar or something. I wonder what they taste like. Miss Layton, no, you can't possibly take a bite out of such a beautifully made object. Hmm, I still have two more things to find. Oh, the clock is a cake as well. That explains why the hands aren't turning. That's also incredibly bad for, like, picking up bugs or something. Like, a lot of this stuff needs to be covered. <laughs> it is hard to tell, isn't it? I generally thought it was a real clock at first. Okay, what about... Eh, eh, eh. Yay, coin! Maybe up here? No. Jelly? Candy? Wait, eh, eh, no. Oh, donut? Oh, just look at all those lovely buns and cakes, desperate to be eaten. Oh, trash can? No. Uh, cake. What a fine selection of cakes. I don't know how you'd ever choose between them. Uh, bell? Hey, coin! Uh, let's see. It says I'm still missing one. Hello, we found something! These shelves are full of all the marvelous ingredients Mr. Lipsky uses for his baking. Look! It all seems to be very complicated. Apparently, even the slightest difference in the amount of sugar can result in total failure. Oh yes, miss. You must have extremely good attention to detail. Rather like what's required for this puzzle. And it's puzzle time! Failing scales. Here are two sets of digital scales. Their displays are both broken in the same place, so the bottom left part of a number does not show up. For example, the number 6 would appear as 5. The sugar being weighed is showing up 1 gram heavier than it is on the left-hand scales, and 1 gram lighter than it is on the right-hand scales. What is the actual total number of grams of the sugar on both sets of scales? Hmm... This one's... This one's interesting. The sugar being weighed is showing up one gram heavier than it is on the left-hand scale, and one gram lighter than it is on the right-hand scale. Ah, oh, I think... Hmm... Six would appear as a five. think. Alright, so what if this uh, I was using the mouse by accident what if this is an 8? No, that wouldn't work then. One gram lighter. Showing up as one gram heavier than it. Alright, so wait. What if this is 8? Yeah, because if this is 8 and this is marked out and it looks like a 9 it would be one gram lighter than it is on the right-hand scales. Yeah. So I think that's an eight. So then what's this one? One gram heavier than what it sh is supposed to be. So, like, if I would put down five, it would actually be six. Oh, I think. I'm pretty sure this is 8, so I can definitely minus that out. So if this is a... make this a 9, and this is technically 8... 
one gram heavier than it is on the left. Hmm. Scales. One gram heavier. This is giving me a headache. D seven can't be it because it wouldn't connect to any kind of number. So wait, what if this is actually nine? No, that wouldn't work because I would have needed this to be lit up and it wouldn't become any other number. So this would have to be 8. Because it would show up as a 9. Because if it showed up as a 9 and it's actually 8, it is 1 gram lighter. So I need something to work opposite on this side. But what number could be it? Can't be a two. Because it wouldn't turn into a number. Three. That wouldn't work either. Four wouldn't work. Five wouldn't work. And there's six. But it would still go down. It's gonna be a real stumper, and I'm sorry that I'm taking a while, but I'm trying to figure this, mentally figure this out. I'm heavier than what it is. So, like, if it was six, then it would technically be seven, but the seven wouldn't become anything. Wait a minute, what about zero? Yeah, if this was zero, and that would get marked out, that would turn into a nine. But it wouldn't be one gram, it would be like super heavy. Actual total number of grams of the sugar on both sets of scales. Uh, I don't want to use a hint coin! <sighs> yeah. Work out which numbers would not display properly due to the broken section. Oh! Oh my gosh! Otaku, thank you! <laughs> thank you for the quick pickle in a cup! This is a real pickle in a cup! Try another one. The four numbers that would be affected by the broken sections are 0, 2, 6, and 8. Look at the numbers 0, 2, 6, and 8 and figure out which ones would turn into other numbers if their bottom left did not display. S God, brain power. Yeah. This this is a lot of brain power. All right. So 0 would turn into a 9. 2 would not turn into anything. 6 would turn into a 5 and 8 would turn into a 9. Wait a minute. No, that's it. 
6 turns into a 5, which goes down. 8 turns into a 9, but goes up. So the answer then would be 14, wouldn't it? No, because... Yeah. 6, and it goes down, which shows 5, but it's actually more, which would be 6. Yeah, so, yeah, I think it's 14. Fourteen. I have a feeling that perhaps. <gasps> Got it. Still not a patch on Miss Layton, of course. You did it. The actual weight of the sugar was eight grams on the left-hand scales and six grams on the right-hand scales. Maybe it's time to get those scales fixed. Oh, so I kept putting the one on the wrong end. That was probably what was throwing me off. But shame I had to waste some coins. Oh well. Oh, brava, miss. I think a cake is in order to celebrate that little victory. Sadly, though, it will have to wait until after the investigation, I think. And we're still shy. One inspection. Hmm. Oh, wait. House? Hey, I got a replacement coin! Let's see. Trying to find places where I haven't. Oh, wait, I haven't actually talked to him yet. Have you made your decision? Oh, it's so hard. Everything in here looks so tasty. By the way, Mr. Lipsky, did you know that the hour hand of one of the clocks in the Elizabeth Tower has gone missing? No, yes, oh, no. I know. Of course, my Bratzy is worried about this. Yes, Hans said he was hoping to have it repaired as soon as possible. He cannot relax if clocks are not running as they should. No, naturally. I understand how he feels. So, you have decided what you like? Oh, I'm sorry. We were so busy admiring all your wonderful decorations. Um, yes. I think I'll go for some of your profiteroles, please. Profiteroles? What's a profiterole? No, oh, yes, but you have to wait a short time if you don't mind. I always make my profiteroles fresh. I only put cream into cases when they are ordered never before. That way, cases remain crisp like they should be. Oh, I'm licking my lips already. Good, then I can go into kitchen and make for you. Please wait here. Hmm. Picked up a scent, cat? Actually, the rubbish bin there has caught my eye. Yeah, there's papers in it. It could do with being emptied, couldn't it? All the rubbish is spilling out. Yes, which seems out of place in such an elegant shop. It looks like it's mostly paper in there. Perhaps we should investigate. Okay. Investigate we shall. There's lots of shreds of paper in the bin. Hmm, it's a sketch of something by the look of it. I wonder what? You can't tell with the paper all in pieces like that. No, we'll have to do something about that. Puzzle! Let's see, puzzle number six. Paper caper. Ooh. There are some pieces of paper in the bin with something drawn on both sides. Put them back together as one sheet and work out what the pictures show. Press and hold A to pick up a scrap of paper and move it around in the frame. Take care not to overlap any pieces. And note that you can't move the pieces that are already in position. Okay. This seems... simple enough. There. Uh... Oh, I can't do it sideways? Um, oh, I'm turning the paper around. Okay, so that goes there. Other eye goes there. Uh, 
That goes... No, not there. Um... Oh, wait, eh, 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 eh. wait a minute. No. Alright, put that aside. That goes there, because it's the only one of that shape. Um... Uh, okay, that connects to this... There. This goes here. And this goes... That's a weird looking squid. Puzzles are made for solving. Yay! You did it! Putting the pieces of paper back together showed a recipe for some bread in the shape of a squid. On the back is something that looks like the hand of a clock. Oh look, you can see what it is now. Hmm, it looks like some kind of recipe. For squid bread, apparently? Ugh, that sounds really unappetizing even to me, and I'm a dog. Look at the back, though. What's on the back? There's something drawn on the back as well. Let's see. It's the missing hand of the Elizabeth Tower's clock. And there are instructions about how to make it, too. It's a blueprint, miss. What the devil is a blueprint of a hand of Big Ben doing in the rubbish bin of Alex Lipsky's patisserie? Hmm... I think we'll keep hold of that particular piece of rubbish. A cat stealing from the bin? Isn't that a bit of a cliché? This could be a vital clue, Cheryl. And I think it's safe to assume it's no longer something Mr. Lipsky wants. Oh, and here's the man himself. Look. Sorry to keep you waiting. Here are your Lipsky special profiteroles. I still want to know what a profiterole is. I think I might want to check after stream. Oh, thank you so much. No, yes, thank you. I hope I see you again sometime. I'm sure that you will. Goodbye now. Good. Now we've taken care of dessert. I think it's time we headed back. Finally, back to the matter of hand. Okay, we got our fifth clue. Clock hand blueprint. Nice. Pieced together from scraps of paper found in the rubbish bin in Lipsky's patisserie. Sketched on the back of a recipe was a drawing of the clock hand. Alright, so we, now we have to head back. I'm guessing back to Hastings? Or here. Alright, cat. Where to next? You've done the restaurant and the cake shop. Please tell me you're full now. Yes, I couldn't eat another thing. So, let's carry on down Chancellor Lane. If we keep heading north, we'll arrive back at the office. Oh, I know what you're thinking, miss. We're stopping in for a quick strategy meeting, aren't we? To discuss our next move? Wrong! There's a lovely little boutique shop next to the Leighton Detective Agency. I thought we could have a peek. Have a peek? A boutique shop, miss? Alright, that's enough, cat. Get your mind back on the job. Come on, Ernest. Back me up here. Well, if Miss Layton wants to find even more delightful clothes to wear, then I'm all for it, actually. You freaking bootlicker! Ugh, give me strength. Come along. The boutique awaits. Okay, we're going down there. And, okay, we cannot see the face. Well, here we are outside the LinkedIn Detective Agency. So, um, where's this boutique shop? It's just next door. Come along. Oh, are you really a detective? I'm starting to have my doubts. Will it be open, do you think, miss? Perhaps it's closed for the day, if it's just a small shop. Hmm, you could be right, Ernest. Well, there's only one way to find out. As soon as I start talking to people. Eh. Uh. Hello? Weird bunny guy? Oh, you got a puzzle! Sangrio's famous Poponios! Special price just for you! See, si, Poponios! P Poponios? Hmm, I'm sure I've seen you before somewhere. Loitering around suspiciously. 
I'm not suspicious. I'm Benny. Anyone wearing an outfit like that needs treating suspiciously. A ponios are the special souvenirs from my homeland, San Grio. If you have a Poponio, they say you get good luck forever. They say your dreams come true. They say you'll be eternally happy. Looking at you, I am not happy at all. <laughs> Gosh, it sounds almost too good to be true. I think we'll have to decline, I'm afraid. We're in the middle of an impopotent investigation at the moment. And I didn't say that word right. Impoponent. No, no, don't say no. If you don't like my Poponios, how about a puzzle? Alright, what do we got? Puzzle number nine. Puzzling paints. The colors of the paints are representing the appearance of something. Apparently, one of the colors can be seen every day. But which one is it? A is black, B is blue, and C is white. Choose one of them. Some puzzles are multiple choice, with answer buttons like A, B, C, or 1, 2, 3. Select an answer button to indicate that's your answer. Then press plus or the submit button to see if you were right. There are some puzzles where you need to select multiple answers. Select each answer to push that answer button down. Then press the submit button to see if you were right. If you change your mind about an answer, simply select that answer button again to clear it. Alright, so... One second. Uh. The colors of the paints are representing the appearance of something. Apparently, one of the colors can be seen every day. But which one is it? Black, blue, or white? Oh, well, right now it's painfully obvious. He's, it's got to be the sky, because that is, like, moving constantly. So it's got to be involving that. White, there are days where there's no clouds. So that can't be it. And then... There's days where it's like dark clouds and rainy, and you don't see blue. But black, you'll always see because there's always night. I think it's black. A. Mm, this should do it, I think. I think I'm right. And that's how it's done. You did it. The paint colors are representing the appearance of the sky. Black is the night sky, blue is the sky on a clear day, and white is the sky on a cloudy day. The color that can be seen every day, regardless of the weather, is the black of the night sky. Fantastic! You got it right! Well, I think for that you should have a Sangrio Poponio! Really? For free? For two-thirds of the normal price! Oh, no thank you. No? Huh. Why does no one want to buy my Poponios? I came such a long way from Sangrio to sell my Poponios all over the world. I was sure Londoners would like them, but nobody shows any interest at all. Oh, I'm... I'm sorry to hear that. They're also ugly as sin. Would you like to buy a Poponio to cheer me up? No. Ah, doing business like this, it is not easy. It's also very... dumb. Hello, Mushroom Head. I could say something else, but I'm family friendly. Ooh! What's a good sound for you? Hmm. I think you'll find this place was empty until recently. But someone set up shop here now. Mayton Detective Agency, it says on the sign! See? Open bracket! In other words, a stoop service. Close bracket. You can't trust detectives if you ask me. They're as bad as the master criminals they're supposed to investigate. Well, you could trust the later name. The agency's motto is Any Mystery Solved. I make it my personal mission to get to the bottom of any and every conundrum that my clients throw at me. You're the detectives? Oh, Bob, you're such an idiot. Idiot, idiot, idiot. It's all right. Please feel free to come in for a consultation if there's anything we might be able to help with. You're so weird looking. Hey! You kind of look like the cat from the, uh, new Pokemon game that's going to be coming out later in the future. <laughs> no. No. Oh, a little cat! It looks like a stray. Perhaps it's lost, do you think? Poor mite. We'll have to help it find its mother. 
Let's see. Puzzle 10. Lost and found. This is a ladder lottery. You need to add horizontal lines to it in the order to reunite the lost ones with their mothers. What is the minimum number of horizontal lines you need to add? Select the box to input your answer. For an explanation of how ladder lotteries work, press X or select the menu button underneath the puzzle picture. Alright. And, okay, that's the usual. Alright, with ladder lotteries, you start at the bottom and follow a vertical line down. When you hit a horizontal line, you must go along it. And when that hits the next vertical line, you start following that one down. Okay. Alright, I need memo. Okay. Now. This one's already lined up. Hmm. And this one needs to get over here. So... Let's cross here. 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 And here. Alright, so that moves down there. Now the monkey would go here and go straight down, so that's good. The rabbit would go down here, and that works. The bird would go down here, cross over, but go down to the bear, so I would need it to go down back this way, to there. And then the bear would go down here, down there, and then down there. And that's all five of them, so you would need five lines. Five. If you'll entertain my idea here. Got it. Still not a patch on Miss Layton, of course. You did it. They all look very pleased to see their mothers. There are several ways to place the five horizontal lines. And I'm surprised that the bear didn't attack the other parents. Because the rest of them are not very violent at all. No, no. I don't think it was lost at all. No, I'm sure you're right, miss. It doesn't actually look like a kitten. I was worrying for nothing. And if people who know Professor Lighton well know who this is. I'm not going to say, though. Oh, were you hoping to buy something in the Lucky Clover? Well, I was hoping to browse at least. Of course you were, my dear. It's run by a lady called Clover Price. She manages the place all on her own, you know. She stocks the most beautiful clothes, and the hats and accessories are delightful too. But since it's just her running the place, her opening hours are rather hidden, miss. She's very lucky to be able to pick and choose when she works. She really is a lucky Clover. You don't know anything about her, cat. Keep your muzzle out of other people's business. Okay, so now we inspect. Coin? Maybe? Oh, jackpot! You have on 10 hit coins! Nice! Alright, where else? There. Another coin. The clock face you can see from here has its four hands and it four hands has its hour hand intact. Look. Okay. Anything else, maybe? I love the outfits on display in the window here. Oh, we got a puzzle. Hmm, the door won't budge. It looks like it is closed today after all. Oh, bother. Sorry, miss. But at least you can easily come again another day, seeing as it's right next door to the office. But I'm in the mood for shopping now. Do you think it's really closed? You don't think the owner will open up for me? No one to give up, cat. Deary me, you young tearaways never look where you're going, do you? Sorry. 
Just look at that puddle at your feet. Oh, goodness, you're right. My shoes would have been ruined. Thank you, madam. I'm very grateful. <laughs> oh, don't mention it. Suede is terrible for getting wet, isn't it? It's funny that there's only a puddle here and nowhere else. I wonder why. There's nowhere for the water to drain away, of course. That's the trouble. Speaking of which, there's a fun little conundrum I know about drains. I wonder if you've come across it before. Puzzle time! Puzzle right! Pipe nightmare! Oh! Here is some very complicated pipe work. If you turn on the correct two valves out of the eight valves at the top, water will flow out of all of the exit pipes at the bottom. If the pipe splits into two, the water will flow both ways, but only in a downward direction. Select a valve to open or close it and decide which pipes you'll send the water down. Work out which two valves are the correct ones to get the water to all exit pipes. Okay. I need, like, my pen here. So, A would take you down to here. I need something that has, like, the most branches. So, something like D. So, D would go down there. There. Okay, you know what? Instead of just using my pen, I'm going to memo this. Alright. So, A takes you straight down here. It goes through B. Well, not through B, but it goes to where B is aligned to. Okay, A then goes down this way. And this way. So this one's already covering four of the eight. So, I would need something maybe on this side to cover up this side. So you know what? Let's work backwards. This one would go here and also diverge here. So then there's goes to E. Hmm. Okay. But then there's F, because I also have to worry about this pipe here. So F goes that way. It also goes this way, which flows that way and to here. Um, there's also B. This way goes here. Goes here. And then it goes here. Alright, so B also covers four. So, how do I erase all this now? Yes, erase everything. So, B seems pretty promising. It goes this way to here. Because I would need something to go really far for A. But B also covers the three other pipelines. So it goes there. Here. And here. Okay. So now... The problem is this one. Because A would take you here, there, and there, but it doesn't take you to this pipe, which is causing a problem. Because it looks like there's only one pipeline that does it. So I guess I use that as the main start point. So here. Okay, so this one... This one, and this, will get filled up by E. But then E also fills up the first one. 
there. Then obviously it goes to here. So, from that, we can assume... Wait, so then B would go here. It would go down to this one. It would go down to this one. It branches off here. Then it goes down there and down here. So it's B and E. Got it. B and E. Got it. Mm, this should do it, I think. Yeah. Puzzles are made for solving. That's what I'm talking about. You did it. Turning on uh, valves B and E makes water come out of all exits. Now all the pipes have flowing water through. Excellent. Wonderful, dearie me. I wish you could solve the problem of this puddle like you solved that puzzle. There's always a puddle here after it rains. Ah, oh, did it rain yesterday then? One of my neighbors said it was raining in the middle of the night, yes. I don't know what she was doing up, mind you. It sounds like it was just a passing shower or two, though. Hmm, rain in the middle of the night? Whoop, we got a clue, and it's our last one. Overnight rain. Case complete. Let's see, neither cat... Ernest or Cheryl noticed but a sizable puddle in the front of the Lucky Clover in Chancellor Lane. A test of a strong shower during the night. Solve this case! It looks like a key, but it's actually a uh, clock tower hand. It's like the small hour hand. Aha, uh -huh, I've got it. I know what happened to the missing clock hand. You do? Indeed. This mystery is history. Who did it then, miss? All in good time, Ernest. We have to call Inspector Hastings first. He'll want to hear this, of course. In fact, yes, I should think the results of the forensic analysis will be ready by now. Ernest, could you trot over to Scotland Yard and pick up a copy of the results? You mean the analysis of those samples they took from the scene? Yes, that's right. Once we have that, I'll explain everything. It doesn't cinematic. make any sense, Cat. Clock hands don't just go missing overnight. Well, not necessarily. What if the hand melted during the night? That's a possibility. No, no, no. Just no. <sighs> I wonder. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes! The hand of the clock must have been an enormous wafer. Now you're taking the brisket! Pieces <laughs> of a substance that could be wafer were found at the base of the clock tower. Put me down. <laughs> Put me down. <laughs> Put me down. <laughs> Tell me you're making this up, please. The samples collected from the scene certainly could indicate a wafer-like material. Yeah, this is Leighton's daughter. It had me confused at first, but of course, wafer makes perfect sense. Oh, yes. Wafer makes perfect sense for the kitty cat. But for the rest of us who aren't crazy, it's a bit hard to swallow. It's the truth that's crazy, not me. Because the truth is stranger than fiction. Yep, and Professor Layton says that line in almost every... Si not just almost, I think literally in every single game he was in. Really? It's highly probable that the culprit is... Someone used to cooking cakes and pastries on a grand scale. And we in know one person. A confectioner. We're looking for a master wafer maker. Time to wafer stomp him. Oh, you again. What do you want now? Well, Mr. Lipsky, it's about the person responsible for the missing hour hand. Me? It's you, isn't it? Bingo! What are you talking about? This is not fair. You can't pick on me. What evidence? If it's evidence you want, how about this? It's... it's drawing of hand! I believe you made this, didn't you? As a plan for your brother, who had you make a giant clock hand out of wafer biscuit. Which is a pretty clever idea if you think about it. But you didn't 
check the weather forecast for the next day, so it kind of went down the drain. <clears throat> I was not enough careful. Like idiot, I made stew. I dropped the hand, and it was broken. I made stew? I guess that must mean, uh, I made mistake in their country? Now Ambassador is coming, and we are in pickle. Mmm, pickle. So you came up with the idea of a wafer hand to buy you some time? No, yes. It was only thing I could think of. But my Bratsy is not to blame. It was all my idea. Could a giant clock hand made of wafer even be supported up that high on Big Ben? Like, it's a wafer! Wouldn't it just, like, crumble from literally the wind? Because you have to remember, altitude's a thing. Bratsy, no! I thought a plan, not you. Quiet, Alex. I told you just follow what I say. <laughs> it's really very charming. Uh, huh? The idea of I mean, they a didn't giant do anything illegal. Made of wafer. It's a wonderful notion. <laughs> uh, still, I <clears throat> did not tell truth. I made big mistake. No, I don't know what me and my Bratsy can do. Oh, that's easy. Easy? Yes. Make another one. We'll present your wonderful wafer clock hand to the ambassador as a gift. What Smart. foreign dignitary wouldn't be delighted by a life-sized replica of a piece of one of Britain's most iconic landmarks? So, you can make a cake of Big Ben. You can make a cake of... I don't know other London landmarks or whatever, but you're going to choose a clock hand. Uh-huh. <laughs> Weird. Really weird, but but uh, oh, that looks oh my god, that looks fantastic! Oh, you British, you know how to entertain, huh? <laughs> Whatever may happen, you will never exit our hearts. I I, I kind of want to eat that, like right now. I want to eat that now. <gasps> so, Ambassador Fodufafa's visit went off like clockwork. And Britain's place as a friendly ally to its European neighbors was firmly re-established. Very nice. Oh, Miss Leighton, you're amazing! I can't believe it. That whole wafer thing. How wasn't that just a shaggy dog story? Ah, but you see, Sher, the truth is always stranger than fiction. It is a pretty much a cake. It's just like a very crunchy cake. But he's going to eat the entire thing himself. Ugh. Too much dessert. How did you like the basket, Cheryl? Was it comfortable sleeping in there? Yeah, thanks, Ernest. He beats sleeping on the street, that's for sure. Or worse. Anything to stay out of the pound. Out of better sea. Well, if there's anything else at all that you need, do let me know. I hear you're homeless at the moment, Cheryl. You're welcome to live here at the office for a while, that would help. Yes, that would be a big help. This memory loss thing is a real rough deal. I don't know who I am or where I came from. I just suddenly found myself wandering the streets. That's the first thing I remember. Until you spotted one of our flyers and decided to enlist the services of the best detective in town. Yes, that was one of the leaflets I designed that you picked up, Cheryl. Miss Layton had done absolutely no advertising at all since she set up here, you know. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. Although, we still haven't had any business. Apart from a vagrant canine. Oh, well, excuse me for merely being a man's best friend. Now, now, Cheryl. I didn't say I was dissatisfied. In fact, I plan to use your dogginess to the full. You do? How? Actually, maybe I don't want to know. By having you do what dogs do best. Using your nose. Following the scent of a villain from the scene of a crime, for example. Oh, I say, Miss Layton, what a champion idea. Yes, Cheryl can perform to police dog duties with his nightened sense of smell. He'll be a wonderful asset to the agency. I hate to rain on your parade, but this doggy's nose knows no notable smells at all. 
Sorry, that was too many no's. Are you telling us you can't smell anything? Not exactly. I mean, I can smell things, but no better than a human can, I'd say. Really? Oh, what a disappointment. I was thinking I might actually find a use for you. Well, sorry I'm such a letdown. <laughs> Never mind, I'm so sure I will prove useful in other ways. Oh, the phone. Get that, would you, sir? Why me? Well, if you can't help sniff out the truth, the least you can do is take phone calls for me. I'm a dog! <laughs> I'll get it. It could be someone with a job for us. Hmm, what can I set you working on, Cheryl? You'll have to pay your way somehow. Cleaning the toilet, perhaps? Or filing? No, your paws prohibit so many tasks. <laughs> they got a mascot. Advertised. That's actually a good idea. Give him a little, uh... Sherlock Holmes outfit, a little hat, and make him your mascot. That would be adorable. I would love that. Actually, I played a game a few months ago that uh, their pet dog actually had that. It was called Golf Story. Uh, the dog actually did have a little uh, English cap and jacket. Oh, I've got it. You could be the latent de Oh. You could be the latent detective agency mascot. We'll stand you on prominent street corners touting for business. I should have read this first before I started all that. Oh, yeah. And I'll throw in a free massage as well. Oh, it looks like Ernest is finished on the phone. That was Inspector Hastings from Scotland Yard, miss. Inspector Hastings? Does he have a new case for us? A murder, actually. A murder? A big case at last? Well, yes, except, well, it seems it's not that simple. The inspector said it was probably a murder, but might not be a murder. But actually, it seems it probably is a murder. Maybe. It's not that hard. Did someone get killed by someone else, or didn't they? I don't know, but the inspector wants you to meet him at Scotland Yard immediately. A murder that might not be a murder, but probably a murder? Maybe? Well, it's certainly intriguing. I smell a mystery that needs unraveling. Oh, bother! What's the matter with you? It's the last day of the Riverside Festival, that's all. I had a rather hope to invite you to accompany me to watch the show this evening, Miss Layton. Oh yes, I'd forgotten the festival was on at that, that moment. What kind of festival is it? It's a London tradition. It takes place on the banks of the Thames. It's a hoot, Cheryl. There are street stalls serving food and drink, and stage performances, and... Oh, it's all rather fun! It goes on for a whole week, but today is the last day. As the climactic finish to the festivities, tonight will be the Riverside Show of Devotion. Yeah, sounds like a real hoot. Oh, it really is. Lots of young men and women who are in love line up on the opposite banks of the Thames to face each other and declare their mutual love. What? In front of everyone else? Absolutely! They say that couples who declare their love at the Riverside Festival will find eternal happiness together, you see. Really? I had no idea about that part of the festival. It's jolly romantic, don't you think? I was hoping to escort Miss Layton so we could watch the show together. But now... Didn't you say it happens every year? There's always next year then, isn't there, Romeo? Perhaps not, actually. Numbers have been dwindling in recent years, you see. There are rumors that they might even abolish the festival altogether. He's trying too hard! Yeah, he's... Oh my gosh, I don't know what kind of euphemism I could tie to this, but yeah, he is longing for her. This may very well be our last chance to experience it. I must admit, it does sound appealing. Really? The romance of it all gets you too, does it, miss? Oh, joy! Oh, <laughs> sorry, Ernest. It's the food and drink stalls you mentioned that have piqued my interest. I shot you down! Ruled by your hunger, not your heart. You should be a dog. Food at festivals always tastes better for some reason, don't you think? It's the atmosphere, I suppose. Oh, yes, I couldn't agree more. It's sharing with what... That's uh, someone special. That really does it, doesn't it? Yes, well, we mustn't keep Inspector Hastings waiting any longer, I suppose. 
come along, you two. We need to pop over to Scotland Yard. Of course, miss. Why do I need to come? Because you need to earn your keep. You're getting free lodging here at my office, remember? Unless you prefer the street corner advertising we discussed before. I'll grab my lead. <clears throat> I'm starting to think I picked the wrong agency here. So sorry, doggy boy. Case number two. Murder on the Thames. Thames, Thammies. I'm just going to call it the Thames. And this must be Scotland Yard. Impressive building. So this is the famous Scotland Yard, is it? It's not much of a yard, and it's not in Scotland either. As a dog who likes open spaces, both renovations are a bit of a disappointment. It's actually quite imposing, isn't it? I'll say, don't forget that the Metropolitan Police are responsible for keeping the peace across the entire city of London. This is a very special place, and not least because it's where Miss Leighton and I first met. It's one of my most treasured memories. Such a fateful meeting, wasn't it, miss? This is no time for reminiscing, Ernest. Inspector Hostings has a possible murder or maybe not he needs our help with. Come along, let's go in. I think in Thames in pronunciation. Thames? So, it is Thames? Oh, so the, the th part of it is not used, it's just Thames. Alright. Oh, sorry, miss. Right you are. That's actually some interesting information. Case codes have been added to Cat's bag. Hey, hello, officer. Hello, hello, hello. What have we here? Katria Layton and company, no less. Good to see you at the yard, ma'am. Inspector Hastings is investigating the latest case with a rather small team of officers. A select few, you might say. <laughs> and after your brilliant performance on the Big Ben case, I'm not at all surprised to find you among them, ma'am. Gosh, you've made a name for yourself already, miss. Yes, which means we'll have to work hard and solve this case, too. I have expectations to live up to now. Okay, so, besides you, what do we have? Kern? Do we have... Other possible gun? Scotland Yard is an absolute icon of the city, isn't it? Such a dignified building. Oh wait, where we at? Woo! I wouldn't want an office up there. Think of all the stairs. Uh, anything else? Gun? Where would we be without buses in London? Hmm. Oh wait. Ah, you can see the clock tower even from here, look! Mm, that's it. No puzzles? No anything? Wow, I'm... Oh, wait, wait! Smoke too soon! There we go! Oh! Oh, I say, there's a puzzle hiding among the folds of that flag. What a highly improbable place for a puzzle. Well spotted, Ernest. You quite often find puzzles where you least expect them. Now then... Why don't you have a go at solving this one, Ernest? Seeing as it was you who found it. Alright. Puzzle number 13. Fraught fishing. A shark is on the prowl at a popular fishing spot, and it's very hungry. You only have three pieces of bait to catch all the fish in the area, but you can't afford to throw any bait too close to the shark, or it will notice and try to bite. Where should you throw your precious bait? Your bait attracts all the fish, including any sharks, sharks, bleh, within a certain range of where you throw it. Of course, you can't throw bait directly on top of fish. That might hurt them. So we only have three. Alright, so it's in a... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. A 13 square grid. Yes, the middle's 9, 10, 11. Yeah, 13. All right, so, um, let's try there, okay, then there, oh, this was stupidly easy, and then here, 
Done. I've seen how to solve this now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are made for solving. Not really much of a puzzle. That was like. Oh, I feel bad for the shark. Just look at him. He's like, my fish. <laughs> you did it. The shark is very envious of all the fish you caught. It's thinking of selling some of its teeth to earn enough to buy a fishing rod of its own. <laughs> nice. I did it. I did it, miss. I solved it. Haha. <laughs> well done, Ernest. I'm impressed. Well, it wasn't easy, but it was well worth it just to hear you say that, miss. Nice. Is there anything on the other one? No. So, uh, okay, yeah, so. Oh, oh yes, I forgot to mention that we can return to the agency at any point, you know. Whenever you'd like to go back, just press the X button or select Lightning Detective Agency button. I've put details of all cases on the pin board, so you can switch to investigating another case whenever you decide to do so. Or you could play around with the office feng shui if you don't like how it's decorated at the moment. Ah, so that would be a way of going back to previous cases and finding any coins or solving any puzzles we might have missed. Yes, and for the less serious-minded Ernest, redecorating can be a nice change of pace. Nice. Alright, inside Scotland Yard. Something's not right. Oh, what is it, miss? Don't you think it's unusually quiet here at the police headquarters, considering a murder has just been reported? Yes, I suppose you're right. I don't see many officers rushing about following leads or anything. Hmm. Oh, look, there's Douglas Dirt, the reporter from the London Times. Ah, let's go and ask him if he knows anything. If anyone will know, it's a reporter. As soon as I talk to other people, and uh, check stiff. Newspapers and magazines for people waiting, eh? Where's Ideal Hound? <laughs> I think members of the public are supposed to sign in here, but I never have. Okay. Uh, what about the plant? Nothing with the plant. Uh. Wait, uh, I heard a beep. Where? Or, oh, okay, it was you. Um. This is the reception desk, Cheryl. I mean, just in case you couldn't see from down there. Hmm. Wait. Coin! Another coin? Hmm. No stray puzzle. Or dusty spot, even. Hmm. All right, what do you have to say? Oh, you have a puzzle. Hello, 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 Miss Layton. I came across this puzzle during the course of my investigations into a certain case. Mum's the world, of course, but I can't figure it out. Oh, could I see it? You could indeed. This is the very puzzling puzzle. I'd certainly appreciate your assistance. All right, puzzle number 14. Pizza preferences. Piping hot pizza has just been delivered, so it's time to get it on the plates, pronto. It's been pre-sliced, and you just need to make sure all three children have precisely the same amount. But, there's always a but, each child has a particular ingredient that he or she doesn't like, so you can't give them slices with toppings they won't eat. You know what I say to this? You just tell the kids, pick it off. Don't be a baby. Pick off the topping you don't like and eat it. <laughs> don't don't make things difficult. All right, so this one doesn't. Am I looking at this right? Egg on pizza? Is that real? Egg on pizza? Oh, that's gotta be a weird texture. Although. The thought of egg yolk running on top of pizza actually sounds good. Like, if it comes to like burgers, or even sometimes hot dog, I'm a sucker for putting a fried egg on it. But pizza, I never thought of putting something like that on there. Alright, so... This one's no egg, no tomato, no bacon. 
And we got different sliced cuts. So, no bacon there. That's good. Okay. I guess I'll just separate it like normal until I figure out the precise amount. Uh, this one doesn't want bacon. Move that to here. Hmm. Crud. Move that here. There's still the issue of tomato. Uh, and then there's this. So let's say it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> the good thing is there is some neutrals. Hmm. So yeah, definitely off kilter here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. This needs to be taken out. For that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Hmm. No, that one has bacon on it. I can't... Yeah, she's stuck with this one. Alright, so let's, for the record, start with the ones that have strictly two pieces on it. Because that automatically means it can only go to one person. So... One bacon, one egg, has to go to her. One bacon, one tomato, has to go to him. Now, no tomato, so it's either him or her. She doesn't have anything yet, so we'll give it to her. Same deal, but let's go over the opposite side. Okay. There. Try there. Maybe th this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Got it! This is an interesting one. Bam! And that's how it's done. You did it! Now eat it up before it's stone cold! I still want to know why they put egg on their pizza! <laughs> That's something else I'm going to need to research! There! That should put you out of your misery, PC Beat! Oh, indeed it should, Miss Layton! Much obliged, I'm sure! Now I'll be able to keep my job on the job! My mind on the job! Lovely jubbly! You're very welcome, Constable! Do call in at the Layton Detective Agency if you need assistance with any other matters. And now we talk to you. Hello there! You're on the same trail as me, I dare say. You heard about the incident at the Riverside Festival, I presume? A murder, no less. What a dark world we live in! So it was a murder, then? Yes, probably, or maybe not. But it does seem likely, then again... Oh, I thought of old people you know at least. Well, the word on the street is it was a murder, but the police haven't made a statement either way. It seems a bit odd, don't you think? A murder at one of London's biggest events should be front page news. Hmm, looks like we're just going to have to get the facts from the horse's mouth. If by horse you mean Inspector Hastings, he passed through here not long hence. 
I pressed him to give me the lowdown, but he gave me the cold shoulder. I think he's probably still in his office. Ah, thanks for that. We'll go and find him. No need to thank me. All I ask in return is a little addition of any dirt you happen to pick up. And I think about all we do. Okay, now we go see Hastings in his office. Which is probably going to be super filled with papers. Wow. Now then, where is the inspector? Oh look, there he is over there. Gosh, his face is as black as thunder. This must be terribly troublesome. Black as thunder? Thunder? You can't see thunder. Thunder is sound. <laughs> he always looks like that. Perhaps he finds every case troublesome. Let's ask. Is that a current top common turn of phrase in Britain? Black as thunder? It's so weird. Alright, uh, what do you find? Coin! Do you think there's something behind all these papers that he's trying to cover up? Uh, eh, eh. No. Uh, radio, maybe? Nope. Blinds? No. Uh, there we go. Well, when I thought your desk was a dog's dinner, this is a whole other level. Ooh, coffee mug. Coin. Uh, clock. <gasps> Puzzle! This clock is absolutely spot on, isn't it? To, to the second. Well, sir, having accurate time references is a vital part of the investigative procedure. Quite right, Ernest. Police and detectives alike always have to make sure they have the correct time. Okay, it looks like it's going to be a puzzle revolving time. A matter of time. An old clockmaker needs help setting the time on these three clocks. The clocks each say different times. One says 4.05, one says 2.18, and the other says 3.05. One of the clocks is 32 minutes fast, another is 28 minutes slow, and one of them has stopped completely. Set them all to the correct time. Uh... Oh, I'm only seeing one clock. Hmm. One says 4.05. One's 32 minutes fast. The other's 28 minutes slow. One says 2.18. Alright, so let's see. 2.18, 2.28, 2.38, 2.40. Two forty nine, two fifty. One's twenty eight minutes slow. Hmm. One's frozen. Okay, this is going to be another uh, mental puzzle. Got to think here. Thirty two minutes fast. Twenty eight minutes slow. All right, so let's work backwards. So 4.05 is the biggest time. So 32 minutes from that would be 355, 345, 335, 333. And the other one is, let's see, 28 minutes slow. Let's try 3.05. So it becomes... 315, 325, 26, 27, 20, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. Okay, so it's 333 there. And the other one, 218, is the one that froze. So that's the dummy number. So the correct time is 333. Two, three. So to double check, 333, three, three, because if one clock's 32 minutes fast, it becomes 405. And from 333, three, three, if one of the clocks is 28 minutes slow, it becomes 305. Yes. So I think I'm good. A good puzzle is something you have to chew over. Yeah! They do call me Sherlock Lucy Combs for nothing. You did it. The correct time is 3... 3.33. The 
The old man looks really pleased now all of the clocks are right. Oh, jolly good, Cheryl. Well done. Are you in training to be a police dog by any chance? Oh, sure. It's what I've always dreamt of, pinstripes. Surely Cheryl's in training to be a detective's dog, not a police dog. And he's made a very promising start. I give up. <laughs> uh... Alright. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What do we got here? You discovered the magnificent mustache. Or not just mustache. Moustache. Just like Mung Doll and his moustache. Oh, you're here, Cat! Good, I've been waiting for you to show up. I see you've got your usual entourage with you. We don't actually allow pets in the yard, but I'll turn a blind eye for now. I hear there was an incident at the Riverside Festival. Yeah, that's right, and the festival's in full swing already. I was actually planning on taking me better half all along tonight to watch the show, but now this has happened. People are saying it's a murder, is that right? Who told you that? Oh, it was me on the blower, wasn't it? But like I said, we don't know for sure. What exactly did happen, Inspector? Hmm, <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I know so far. Early this morning, a man and a woman fell from opposite banks into the Thames. Not Thames, Thames! And I haven't been seen since. But it sounds like it was no accident. The man was pushed by someone. Then it's clearly a murder. The woman, on the other hand, chucked herself in. Gosh, a murder and a suicide. You're not suggesting the two events are unrelated, but just happened to occur at the same time coincidentally. We haven't managed to ascertain yet whether they're unrelated or not. There's people trolling the river as we speak, but we still haven't found either one of them. This is making my head hurt, really. On the phone before, you said it was probably a murder, but not be a murder. What did you mean by that? Do you know anything about the victims at all? According to our investigation so far, the girl was called Vic, and the bloke was called Tim. Last names not forthcoming. Both of them lived on Chancellor Lane, it seems. Well, blow me down with a feather. Everything seems to happen on our street. Apparently, the pair were set to appear as part of the Riverside Show of Devotion tonight. I wonder what's behind all this. It's my job to find that out, Sunshine. It seems I was requested personally to handle this investigation. And not only that, I've been told not to involve too many officers. On the one hand, I'm flattered, but on the other, I'm flummoxed. There isn't exactly much to go on. And I'm a pamper to be having so many few officers at my disposal as well. Which is partly why I asked you to come out down here, okay? You couldn't end a hand, could you? I see, so that's the solution situation. Tell me, who is it that asked specifically for you, Inspector? I'm just on my way to see the person in question now as it happens. Tag along. I'm led to believe I could find her down at Guildhall. Guildhall? You mean the town hall on Gresham Street? Yep, that's the one. Come on, shake a leg. All right then, lead the way. Okay, Guildhall. But I think this is a good time to stop. As soon as I get out of this chat, thank you. Save. Wow, it's been a while since I saved. There we go. We made some pretty good progress, and some pretty uh, challenging puzzles so far for just being the beginning of the game. I am definitely looking forward to playing more of this. I know I've played this before a few years ago, but again, I don't remember very much at all. So, we're gonna find a raid target for tonight. Send you guys over to uh, the Texan Panda. All right, so 
Until next time for Catriel Layton and the Millionaire's Conspiracy. Wow, I lost the title in my head there for a second. Everyone, have a good day, good night, and I will see you all in the next stream. Take care. Bye.